Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. Uh, so today we're going to decide and, and fix up and get done the borders for the uh, Block Wednesday Autumn Wonders. Uh, and I have a question. I'm trying to decide if it should have cornerstones in the four corners up there, <clears throat> like right up here, or should it just be the borders because I've been doing a lot of borders but I'm thinking this particular fabric will lend itself well to having four corners okay so before we get to that it is square dance day now I can remember doing square dancing in elementary school <laughs> I don't know that I ever did it any other time uh, but it was a lot of fun I remember it being a lot of fun uh, so I'm thinking if you have a quilt made with only squares share it today just squares <laughs> no triangles in there no rectangles of course if you have those you can show them but let's see what we can see for square quilts with just squares and uh it is throw out your leftovers day so this is a public service announcement if you need to clean out your fridge it's almost the first of december i think right at the end of the month is a good time to sort of get in there get to the back <laughs> <laughs> look at your expiration dates on everything um, being that there's just two of us and um, sometimes our jars of things we just can't use everything in it I might use it for just a couple of dishes and that's it so you know those have to be checked every so often okay so that's your public service announcement for today um, also I am going to uh, show you the next block Wednesday block a week the next block a week uh, layout and pattern for the layout and the supply list so that'll be after we discuss this this bad boy okay I did a bunch of clips where I am trimming the apples and showing you how I went through that process uh, matching the apples where I had to add fabric so let's take a look so deciding the width of the border for me is generally super visual. Um, sometimes I just kind of go with three or four inches, but when I have like a little bit larger scale print, like the apples there, uh, so this is out of scale. You can see it. It's just way, way big. And so what I have is a ruler. And let's see, you know, what is it exactly? Oh, it's 10 inches. That is 10 inches wide, just so you get a feel first as to what that looks like. This would be like what I would put on drop on a bed, bed quilt, you know, like a queen size quilt. I would have a 10 or 12 inch drop. Uh, this would be the top of the bed and then this would hang over the side. Uh, that is how I do it so that I have enough drop on a, on a queen size bed. Okay, so that's not it. And I knew that all along, but I wanted to show you what it looks like so you can visualize it. And you can do this at home on your design wall or on the floor um, so that you can actually see the scale and get an idea of what looks good. So let me narrow this down. I took it half the width. This is now five inches wide right there, five inches wide. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I kind of like the five inches wide. Um, I'm not mad about that. <laughs> it it gives more of the apples. If I start to take it down too much, you sort of lose the apples because they're quite big. Um, yeah, so you can see like three finger width, you know, three finger widths of, is an apple. So they're they're a decent size. Let me take this down just a little bit more and you can see. Now I have it down to three inches and you can still see the apples so you're not going to lose them but because the apples are not in a straight line do you see that they're kind of you know back and forth and so you get some in there and then you have places here where like the apples you know are kind of off the both edges i think three is too narrow i think it doesn't do anything for the quilt um i like the five five's kind of chunky and I think it gives the whole quilt, like for it to be used, the five inch will be really nice. Um, I might do four and a half. That's just taking a little bit off, but I think I'm gonna go for five. I can always trim it down. You can always trim it down. Go a little bit wider than you think, and then you can trim it if in the end it seems too much. So I'm gonna go for five. Here is the mock-up. I've got 
three strips cut. Well, I actually have the bottom one here. They all need to have, uh, you know, just like this. They all need to have some more added, so there'll be a seam on each one, which is fine. Uh, I didn't think it through well enough. I cut the two horizontals first, and I think if I had left them, I think I still would have had to cut. I think I still would have had to uh, piece the sides, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and I will stagger. I will piece so that the this one has it at the bottom, and that one I'll shift it down so that um, the seam is at the top. You know, just stagger so that your eye doesn't all of a sudden catch on it being like at an equal spot. Okay, that's, <laughs> I digressed, but it's something to think about, something to think about. But yeah, that, that's the five inches, and I think that looks perfect. I love it. Um, okay, so I'll have to do some little magic to line up apples and get, get the uh, pieces all long enough. So if I decide to put the sides on first, then my strips are, you can see here, they're long enough. I gotta make them to size, but uh, then I just will shove this over, push that down. Then I'll just add for the top and the bottom strips. I will add a piece. So I only have to do piece two of the borders since these. I don't know what I was thinking. I had forgotten. I pulled it all the way up to the top. Uh, <laughs> and then I started thinking. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. So I'll be good. I'll be good. I only have the top and the bottom that I have to piece a, a piece on there. So I'm looking for where the repeat is on this so that I can cut another strip and add some to this piece and I have to add it to the other, you know, the top and the bottom. So on this I can see there are three apples on this diagonal because I kept trying to find like the a pink apple and a gray apple that were balanced like that with these leaves and then all of a sudden I noticed, oh look, there's a three apples right together. That is much easier to spot than the other because I wasn't finding the other. So I'm looking along here and I found them down here, but they're cut off and I can't use those because I need three full apples. So that means it is, where? You can see it right here. So th that one's way up here. The repeat is way up here. So if I like put that apple right on top, there, you know, now they are, that's exactly the strip that I need to cut for that one. But I'm wondering if, you know, because it's repeated here, then repeated up here. So you do get some waste if you're going to work like this as possible. But we do have this other one. And it's possible I do not need, I can fit it below, that it'll, its repeat will be low, be below those three apples because there's enough room. So I don't see, so here I have no three apples that are together, but I can see this one, a gray and a gold apple, gray and a gold apple. And so here's a repeat gray and a gold apple down here. No, no, that's gray, the opposite. I need here. I need the gold one on top. Oh, so it's like right below. That's, that, that won't work. The, it's the gold and then the green. See, the gold's on top, the green's on the bottom, and they're basically right next to each other. So you could do one of two things. If I didn't want to, you know, have this big strip left, I could see if there's a place where they kind of connect and it doesn't look too bad. You know, like it's not too jarring. Like I can find maybe between the apples, like this. So you kind of find a spot maybe between the apples where there's a low contrast pink and I can go between the apples. So like something like this. Let me, let me get the other camera. So here's what I've done is I've done a fold so that I have, you know, just this little bit of pink so that I can find so I see if I can find a spot where it looks pretty good. So I have to lay it, just lay it along there. Now if I'm doing this here, that doesn't look too bad because I've got a new apple starting. You know, here I don't want. I don't want the gold to gold. Um, you know, because I think that much is much more obvious than letting it just have this lighter apple, this lighter pink apple, 
and then you know, up there there will be an apple cut off and it's pink and gray um, is there a better option or is there a pink above a pink like right here see there's a pink above the pink and so yeah that's a better option uh, I think it's a better option because I don't have I just have all the pink which is softer and just your eye isn't going to focus on that so I'm going to use this strip down here so I can be really frugal and then the other strip these will line up on one of the three apples there because I've got the three apple thing going on so that strip will be up here so I'll have a strip down here and strip up here and then I just have this little piece in between that I'm not using which is excellent 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 the strip is cut and I've got the folded piece just laying where I want it and then now what I'm going to do is take a glue stick and I will just fold this back and go ahead and do a glue line I'm, I've got this one handed at the moment so pretend I've just done the whole glue line up here so you can see the glue line right so I'm gluing it down you know this is a water soluble glue that I use for all kinds of things and so I'm also making a strong finger crease along here then then what I will do when I sew it is open it up and here is my sewing line so right here is the sewing line and that's my seam so then this will go into my this little piece here will go in the scrap bag and then this is longer than I need but I will trim it to the exact size after it's sewn and then I will just repeat that for the one that matches up to these three apples and I will do, be doing it on this very first set see here's the first full set I'll be doing on this set um, and I've got to cut the I'm gonna actually glue that down first I will glue it you know tuck under the edge here tuck under the edge glue it down and then then I will trim that way I know I'm not messed up <laughs> I know I didn't mess it up so anyways I have to get that fiddled and perfect and how I want it I may even just not mess with the out I know that the three are there I can actually fold it back this far back so maybe one little there we go something like that so I have to get it lined up there that's pretty good Ooh, like that okay I'm gonna hold it there so I'll do that one too so I cut the one side and you can see here's the uh, fold <laughs> I lost it for a second here's the fold but I cut down the one side and now I will cut the other side to get it to five inches cut all the way down so it's already in place and gosh I keep losing it in the camera view okay so it's already in place and all I am doing is is trimming it to size rather than trimming it to size ahead of time or I might accidentally shift it a little bit uh, I wanted I wanted to lock that one in since I was really uh, finessing it to be right on the money so that needs to go up just a little bit so there we go okay doing it that way this is the strip that I had left other and now I have all of this that I can either save for another project or I may use it for the backing uh, of this quilt but this is all I had rather than a much bigger piece if I had tried to bake this first one exactly fussy cut and you know like on on point to you know exactly the position but it looks really good and it's all about keeping that light and these sort of pop towards you the darker ones seem to like visually you see those more so that light very light pink just blends in the background you don't notice it so all of that comes to this point where you know I have uh, two strips two vertical strips for the sides that can be trimmed down and then I have two of the horizontal apples and like here is one of the seams which I'm just really pleased that it does visually you know and these these are five inch wide borders if I didn't say that or say it again they're five inch wide but I started leaving these up here and I thought you know I did this little fussy cutting and everything but if I just put all four borders on it is it is going to have apple weirdness matching at four spots so I thought, well maybe on this one I would do cornerstones 
and cornerstones would be taking a piece of fabric we'll just do this let me put the uh, vertical back up here and I'll grab let me grab the other camera and we'll we'll look at it straight on Here are some options because I'm thinking let's take a look at some light options and I do have more of this fabric because you know I bought extra of this line because I love it so much so I because these are five inch squares so I have to get four five inch squares and I might just be able to get it out and then I have you know a lot of that one uh, so let's see if I did the pale pink and okay I need to pin it so there's the pale pink and it just sort of blends away it doesn't um, add anything it's you know not that exciting this is the little bees which I really like because it gives some texture up there it doesn't break it up a whole lot it sort of it kind of lets your eye flow just like the pink did but is a little bit more interesting the yellow does the same but it's a little bit more contrast so you see that I like that even better than the bees there's one with the white background with the little little bitty flowers so another eh, not so great there's the gold with the flower which I also use for the frames here and the triangles I like that one too I like that one a lot so now you have a little bit more weight up there it's not that lightness so it's more very much more distinct so let's look at a dark and there is the dark it's the same fabric here around the frame It's with the little bees in it and so that also gives weight uh, even more weight than the gold then I thought, you know, I have a bunch of little miscellaneous cutaways that I sewed up into half square triangles in a variety of sizes from doing the blocks. And so I thought, well, they could make a cornerstone. There's um, the ones that are dark. These are the biggest ones. Now, it has to be five inches unfinished these are then that be four and a half in the in the quilt so I'd have to if I sewed them then I would have to trim them down because they're going to be much bigger or I'd just trim these in advance there's four of them and so they need to be um, you know I'd have to figure out the size I'm not doing it in my head right now but I have those I also have some smaller ones that could could be like this with the gold um, I don't, you know, and I don't know if I have enough of any of them, and that would not be, these would not be qu probably quite big enough. Well, they might be close. They, whoops, they might be close. Uh, so what I'm going to do is see if there, I didn't press these like I had those other ones pressed. So here would be an option with the white in the middle or the gold in the middle. I kind of like this, this with the block. So I'm going to I'm going to put this block up. I'm going to put this block up on the wall. So there you can see where it's the diamond uh, up there. And, you know, I could actually sew new ones where but they still have seams like they would still have seams I uh, like to get I could do the the uh, apple fabric where the white fabric is and then the, the diamond would just float there. But then you're still going to have the seams. And the whole reason I'm doing this is to not have uh, seams of apple to apple have seams of something else so that's kind of cool all right I'm gonna measure those think about that so first of all let me know if you like the corners or you would just do the apples after fussy cutting some you would still just go and eh, let's slap it on there so decisions decisions I actually let's see if you can see it yeah I flipped it to put the yellow on the outside I kind of like that one so anyway, you can chime in because you'll see it the next time I, maybe next Wednesday, <laughs> maybe before that, whenever I get it done. Okay, so our next block Wednesday is what's in your closet. It is about the clothing in our closets. You know, it'll be a fun sort of spin through different clothing and just fun things about them. Uh, whether you sew them or not, it doesn't matter. It's just my themes are just something fun to do each um, week when we have a new block. And I have two layout options. One has two a couple sizes of blocks and it's asymmetrical. And then the other is I will for the three size three blocks that are not 12 inch, I will give you a 12 inch block version uh, and then there's for the people who just like symmetry you can do all 12 inch blocks and do this one and this is both the supply list 
and the pattern for the layout, just like I've been doing. So those of you who are new, it is all together. We go, we have the, the supply list, and then it goes right into the patterns. So, um, you know, telling you how to, how to lay it out and all the, all the directions. So remember that, remember there's always a project page for this at I Love To Make Quilts and because it's a current project, it is right up at the top and that's how you find everything. You go to I Love To Make Quilts and you go to the project page um, and it'll all be there. So it's gonna be super fun. I am using my drawing room and so that'll be really cool. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to play with that in this sampler. Okay. You can download that and get ready. We are starting, did I say that? January 24th the, for that Wednesday because um, we're getting some more Fat Quarter bundles cut at the Fat Quarter shop. Uh, and so that will be in uh, in a couple weeks. They'll have that all done. And then if you wanna do it with my fabric, uh, you'll be able to, to do that. Okay, I also have some, I have to, this tea, this wonderful tea came from our ambassador Yvonne and she told me it was coming, it may not be you know, marked that it was from her. So, and I forgot to ask her when it came, I forgot all about that part. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. Also, uh, more hidden things in the fabric. It's hard, don't do that. <laughs> I don't find them. Look at these cute little mushroom earrings. Look at this so darling so so sweet thank you thank you i've got a couple of cards this is from jillian in nebraska oh so pretty thank you thank you and i have from this our, our ambassador bobby <laughs> look look at that cheers cheers <laughs> the gang's all here right and I have from, oh, what's your first name? What is your first name? There we go, from Darlene, Darlene in Nebraska. And she sent me a Starbucks card, which is taped to the inside. I do that too, Darlene. I tape the cards, I tape gift cards into the cards that I'm shipping. So funny, right? It's like, I don't know why, I just feel like it's safer that way. <laughs> the mail came, so I have another thing. This is from Barbara in Indiana. Love the lemons. What she said is she saw this and she thought of me, and she thought this could be kind of my version of Elf on the Shelf. Gnome on the Shelf. Look how cute he is in his little red outfit and knitted. Look how, look, look at the little knitted hat. So darling. Okay, so do you think I should hide? I don't know what Elf on the Shelf does. I think there's like stories and they hide them. Do you think Greg would even notice if I like stuck this on his desk? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> this is from Sandra in Missouri. And she also sent me a yummy Starbucks card and a beautiful birthday card. Everybody has made my birthday so special this year. It has been just incredible. If anything is you know, stuck in the mail and hasn't gotten here yet, I will show it on the, the next videos. So, all right, my friends. Okay, getting this one done, getting this one done. And don't forget, go download, go download this so that you have and you're ready for the next block Wednesday. So I love you. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.